know what? You should really try the hot sauce. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I promise I'm slightly less dorky than you think. Some things just don't go together, and people are no exception. I'm really sorry about last night. I couldn't have been easy on you. It definitely won't make my list of top ten favorite evenings. You have a list? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten movie couples with the worst chemistry. Well, you're quicker than most fellas. Generally, they wait till afterwards. For this list, we're taking aim at those actors that are supposed to be in love on screen, or at the very least, they're supposed to feel a little spark for each other, but fail to convince the audience of their feelings. I have a bit of a dental emergency. You know, you don't have to make up stories, Cam. If you want to see me, all you have to do is ask. No, seriously. We're not limiting our choices to couples, however, and are also including love triangles where the chemistry is non-existent. I can't believe this. A f***ing man? Okay, I, I really thought this was all about sharing. What are you, telling people where we are now? Mind your own f***ing business. Shut the f*** up. Blow me. Listen, both of you shut up. Number 10. Will Ferrell and Nicole Kidman bewitched. We're about to kiss, aren't we? I thought so, but thanks mm. for ruining the moment, Miss Narrator. <sighs> the 2005 film version of Bewitched was dead on arrival because it had no idea what it wanted to be. Hello. <gasps> Daddy, what? Well, if it isn't my spell casting a magical daughter who gave up witchcraft. Is it a satire, a remake, or an homage to the classic 60s comedy series? A couple changes to the script. Um, it was running a little long, so we uh, cut your lines. Hey, think of it this way. It's less to memorize. <laughs> Since the film can't make up its mind, Kidman and Farrell have little chance at creating three-dimensional characters. Listen, maybe we could go to dinner tonight. God, I'm so nervous. I don't think so. I have to get home. Oh, no, we won't make it a date. I'll just, I'll just happen to stop by your place and ask you if you're hungry. No. Yes, that's a yes. No! In the end, she just comes off as a naive, inconsistently written airhead, and he comes off as an egotistical, childish jerk. Oh. I just... Look, one more. I love it when you swim. One more. Just... Just, just one more, and the second I'm being a jerk, you can yell, Hey, he's being a jerk! Their forced relationship makes no sense, but neither do any of the other motivations in this film. That is cool. That's great. You are very frustrating. Did you have some Daniel Day-Lewis thing happening here? The most impressive magic in the movie may have been when they made their chemistry disappear. Wow. Yikes! Ah, that was terrible. It's okay. No, I was terrible. I don't think mine was good either. <laughs> Number 9. Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel, The Happening. Are you packed? Yes. What are they saying? They're evacuating New York City. M. Night Shyamalan doesn't exactly have a knack for demonstrating how couples interact or how human beings talk. Elliot? Yeah? It's just making sure you're there. Thus, Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel have even less personality than the killer plants in The Happening. I'm sorry about everything that Joey stupid. You've been great taking care of Jess. Their relationship is supposedly intended to be the film's emotional core. However, they're so deadpan and lifeless that nobody cares if these individuals overcome this epidemic or sort out their marriage problems. If we're gonna die, I want you to know something. I was in a pharmacy a while ago. There was a really good-looking pharmacist behind the counter. Really good-looking. I went up and I asked where the cough syrup was. I didn't even have a cough. It would have made more sense if they turned out to be pod people all along. Would have been a better twist, too. Planning on stealing something? No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep? What? No! Number 8. Leonardo DiCaprio and Cameron Diaz, Gangs of New York. What's that, then? That is a gift from Mr. Cutting. Martin Scorsese is great at depicting complex, abusive relationships between dysfunctional people. But sweeping romance hasn't exactly proven to be his strongest suit. Quite a pair of conversationists, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe not. Or deep thinkers. The love story is pretty tacked on in Gangs of New York, with DiCaprio's Amsterdam and Diaz's Jenny failing to light up the screen together. This will all be finished tomorrow. No, it won't. Their chemistry is at soap opera levels, which you could argue is in the tradition of other Hollywood epics. 
This is what I wanted to show you. This is where we're gonna go as soon as you get well. Unlike Titanic, though, the romance here simply never feels genuine. <laughs> where to, miss? To the stars. It doesn't help that Diaz seems miscast in her role altogether, although she does give it her best shot. I was 12 years old. My mother was dead. I was living in a doorway. He took me in. Took care of me. In his own way. Number 7. Dane Cook and Jessica Alba. Good luck, Chuck. Somebody somewhere got it into their head that once a girl's been with me, she'll meet her true love with the next guy that she goes out with. It's <laughs> you believe it? <laughs> Please. People will believe whatever they want to believe. We at Watch Mojo have made our feelings for Jessica Alba's acting clear, and Dane Cook fits into that category too. I'm just not emotionally available at this time. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm looking for more of a physical relationship anyway. So I've heard. These acting powerhouses partner for Good Luck Chuck, where every woman who sleeps with Cook's Chuck finds her true love immediately afterwards. And Alba's the girl he hopes will break the curse. Look, I just, I know three women you've gone out with, and I'm just not into dating as a sport. But we find it hard to believe these two even want to be in the same room together, let alone spend the rest of their lives with one another. I can't believe you're still sick. How long has it been? Two weeks. It's, uh, it's killing me, but, you know, I don't want to infect you. At this point, I wouldn't mind. You can actually see the leads trying to look like they're attracted to each other. A sure sign of sexual compatibility if ever we've seen one. We think Chuck's luck done run out. I'm very close to changing my phone number. Do you understand? Number six, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, Gili. So I guess this is just my roundabout way of saying that it is women who are in fact the most desirable form. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Remember when Benifer 1.0 was the ultimate celebrity super couple? So this is where you grew up? You're writing a book. Ben and Jen may have met on the set of Gili, but this infamously horrendous picture set both their acting careers back a decade. And it probably didn't help their off-screen relationship in the long run either. I just, I gotta tell you, I'm not up for this thumb deal. I say we don't do it. With Affleck playing a macho meathead and Lopez playing a lesbian, it's completely inconceivable that these characters would ever fall in love. You know I haven't done this kind of thing hardly ever. You know, the whole man thing doesn't really hold that much for me, usually. Chemistry between the actors doesn't make this contrived relationship any easier to buy, especially when they have to say lines like, It's turkey time. Huh? Number five, Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie, The Tourist. Where I come from, the highest compliment that they can offer a person is to say that they're down to earth. Grounded. I hate it. It drives me nuts. Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp are two of the most respected, talented, and appealing movie stars in the world. You're ravenous. Do you mean ravishing? I do. You're ravenous. I am. So how is it possible that they have zero chemistry in The Tourist? You're kind of worried about me, aren't you? Yes. And I'm worried about you. Well, this entire movie is actually kind of the definition of shallowness. The production values look attractive on the outside, and of course the leads look attractive on the outside, but there's no heart, emotion, or humanity on the inside. Invite me to dinner, Frank. What? Would you like to have dinner? Women don't like questions. Just goes to show that appearances can be deceiving, even when great talent is involved. $20 million worth of plastic surgery. And that's the face you choose. Do not like it. It'll do. Number four, Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman, the Star Wars prequel franchise. Annie? My goodness, you've grown. So have you. Grown more beautiful, I mean. 
Well, for a senator, I mean. It's hard to believe that the man responsible for Han Solo and Princess Leia's relationship also wrote the love story between Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala. Something's happening. I'm not the Jedi I should be. I want more. And I know I shouldn't. Watching Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman together in the Star Wars prequels is excruciatingly painful. You're so beautiful. It's only because I'm so in love. While their performances are stiff and bland, can you really blame them? You try making lines like, Believe me, I wish that I could just wish away my feelings. And that diatribe about sand sound natural. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Not like here. Here everything is soft. And smooth. A five-year-old could construct more romantic dialogue than this. To be angry is to be human. I'm a Jedi. I know I'm better than this. What else can be said except... No! Number three, Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson, Fifty Shades of Grey. Are you gonna make love to me now? Two things. First, I don't make love. I f hard. And the second thing? Once again, you can't entirely blame the actors here, as Johnson and Dornan give perfectly solid individual performances in Fifty Shades of Grey. How did you start doing this? One of my mother's friends. I was 15. Given the material they're forced to work with, which, by the way, started as Twilight fan fiction in case you didn't know, they don't have a snowball's chance in hell of making their on-screen relationship believable. Why can't we sleep in the same bed? Why won't you let me touch you? Why does it have to be like this? Even if Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman had played Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele, their love scenes still would have been more laughable than steamy or romantic. Did that hurt? No. You see? Most of your fears in your head. Let's just hope that Johnson and Dornan find better roles to keep them occupied between making this mess and Fifty Shades Darker. I've fallen in love with you. No. No, Anna, you can't love me. Number two, Justin Guarini and Kelly Clarkson from Justin to Kelly. Every girl's bathroom has a secret escape door. Girl, my hair won't even fit through there. I'm from Texas. I've seen bigger. In the early 2000s, American Idol dominated the planet. So, Justin, do you spend a lot of time in the girls' room? You know, I just need to make a quick escape. Me too. It's total insanity out there. There's even one guy passing out whipped cream bikini contest flyers. It turned Kelly Clarkson into an overnight sensation and runner-up Justin Guarini into an overnight flavor of the month. Where are you going? We need to talk. I have nothing to say to you. Why are you being like this? What am I supposed to be like after what you've done? As a means to cash in, we got the shamelessly gimmicky rom-com from Justin to Kelly. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs> Set during spring break, the movie plays like a musical fanfic written by a shipper trying to push Clarkson and Guarini together. So you promise you'll come out to Texas? You're about to take a hovercraft to get there, baby. <gasps> oh, come on, you two, put me in all tushy. It's spring break. Let's party! <laughs> As a result, the stars just look embarrassed to be there and prepared to fire their agents. We'd rather see a buddy picture starring William Hung and Sanjaya. So we're still on for the marina at four? Yes, yes. But if I see any sign of any non-dairy whip topping, I'm leaving. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Deep down, you may still be that same great kid you used to be. But it's not who you are underneath. It's what you do that defines you. I knew it was you. Why did you say something? But he is kind of handsome like me. You said she was playing. 
That girl may be a lot of things, but she ain't plain. I wouldn't know. I only have eyes for you. And you really think that's gonna work? Now you'll wait your turn. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I, I, I'm never gonna be an English teacher. But I know why I'm here. To be a pilot. And you don't dogfight with manuals. You don't fly with gauges. I mean, it's all about feeling and speed and letting that plane become like a part of your body. And that manual says the guy who's a slow reader can't be a good pilot. That file says I'm the best pilot in this room. All we did was make love. In the handcuffs. It was different, but it was still making love. Number one, Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart and Taylor Lautner. The Twilight franchise. You're asking me about the weather? Yeah, I, I guess I am. It's no shocker that some of the most poorly written romance novels of all time would inspire the worst cinematic love triangle ever. If any of them bites a human, the truce is over. What if I choose it? It has nothing to do with you. No. No, I won't let you. You're not gonna be one of them, Bella. It's not up to you. To add insult to injury, Stewart, Pattinson, and Lautner make zero effort to emote feelings of affection throughout the Twilight Saga. You. Why haven't you called me back? I had nothing to say. Well, I have tons. Hold on. The fact that Bella looks vaguely constipated as she walks down the aisle is reason enough to place this expressionless trio at number one. It's not like you're gonna have a real honeymoon with a new one. It's gonna be as real as anyone else's. That's a sick joke. They've taught a generation that lustfully staring into somebody's eyes is all a healthy relationship truly requires, giving us all unrealistic expectations for romance. I'm not scared of you. Well, you really shouldn't have said that. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. Do you agree with our list? I thought this would be okay. How would it be okay? Because it's me, it's still me. I'm a little freaked out right now. I know, but I can't change what I am. What other actors fail to spark any on-screen chemistry? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. My tastes are very... Singular.